want to just talk a little bit first about the sort of strange, strange debate that seems to be going on about the Bayesian super yacht, which, of course, you'll be aware, sunk in the early hours of it was uh, Monday morning. Uh, taking the lives very sadly of, of seven people who were on board. The yacht itself, 53 metres long, was, according to the company that built it, virtually unsinkable. So how did it sink and how did it sink so quickly? Dr John Baptiste Supe is a professor of mechanical and design engineering at the University of Acton. Professor, great to have you with us this afternoon. How can a 56 metre long yacht disappear between, below the surface of the Mediterranean in a matter of minutes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ben. That's that's in the question that's puzzling us. We're looking at vessels that are very safe, that are built to very strong and, and rigorous engineering standards. So for a vessel of that side to find itself going down without any major structural failure, the accounts of the divers that are, that are you know, the vessel is, is pretty much intact. Um, so that's something that's very puzzling. We know that there was a report of very strong but very localized weather so what we call a, a water spout or essentially a, a mini tornado over the sea um, and that could contribute to explain why this vessel was affected when another met vessel a couple of hundred meters away was not um, but there's also questions being asked about the preparation of the vessel and mm -hmm. the crew um, with respect to the weather alerts that day and the, the company that built it say it's unsinkable. They say it must have been a whole string of human errors that led to it actually sinking. I mean, in a sense, Jean-Baptiste, they would say that. But is that your sort of suspicion too, that for something like this to happen and for a vessel of that size to sink so quickly, an awful lot of things must have gone very, very wrong indeed? Yes, those vessels are built with watertight sub-compartments. The idea being that should you hit something on the water, you could fully flood one of those compartments and still be afloat. So for the vessel to sink, especially at that speed, you are looking at taking on water across a number of compartments along the length of the vessel. Mm. So we know there's an element of freak weather event that would um, lead the boat to lean over on its side and, and start taking on water. But whether that has been accentuated by human errors um, is, is now going to be the next phase of the investigation. And, and it, it's very curious indeed, because the, what this company says is they say, well, those on board claim that this weather appeared out of nowhere. And they point out that actually the weather event was predicted. It was on all the weather maps and the forecasts. So there's a lot that doesn't add up here, isn't there? Yeah, some of, some of the rough weather was indeed um, forecasted and you would expect you know any vessel to take measures. Mm. When we look at those water spouts, they are very short-lived. They can come out of nowhere and, and disappear very quickly. And so this is the kind of event that could lead to dramatic consequences. We know that the divers have gathered a lot of information, you know, during their, their numerous trips down there. Um, so they will have a better idea about any hatches or windows that may have been left open, whether the keel was fully down or whether it's been retracted. Um, and obviously we know that there's been extensive interviews of, of the captain and the crew now. Mm. All the details haven't filtered into the public domain yet, but the investigation is underway. And lots more to come out, I'm sure, in the days and weeks to come.